Hi everyone. Many people think that Flutterflow can only be used to build mobile apps. But in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how we can develop many different types of native applications. Specifically, I'm going to walk you through how to create a Google Chrome extension using Flutterflow. This tutorial was inspired by the blog on our website. Now let's go ahead and create our project and name it NoteKeeper. Essentially, we're building a simple extension for saving notes quickly inside your browser. In order to get started, you obviously first have to create an account below at flutterflow.io and create a new project. Go ahead and unselect the setup Firebase since we won't be needing it for this project. And let's start editing. Now by default, when we get into Flutterflow, the UI builder is going to be set to a typical mobile view, but we can resize the application to a dimension that's suitable for our use case. So we're using the display resize handlebars button to resize our application here. Now let's jump into building the UI. We're going to build a single page to display the notes, a floating action button to open an end drawer, and an end drawer where we can place user input. So this is going to happen in five steps. Let's go ahead and customize the app bar with a white background color and name it notes. Now our next step is going to be to add a list tile widget inside the column. And we're going to have to customize this as needed. So I'm going to go ahead and mess with some of the design property panels over here. Let's go ahead and add some padding. Make that 24 on all of the list tile sides. And let's go ahead and change this color so it pops out a little bit. I'll probably mess with this a little bit later and feel free to design the application as you would like. In the interest of time, I'm gonna go ahead and fast forward a bit here, but all I'm doing is designing the list tile widget to my liking. And so feel free to do the same um, depending on your own application. Here's what I ended up with. And now we're gonna go to step two of adding the floating action button onto our UI. And we can easily drag and drop this into our UI. Essentially, the floating action button is going to be used by our user to add a new note into this NoteKeeper Google Chrome extension. So let's go ahead and make some small adjustments to this. Go ahead and change the color. And then now what we're actually gonna do is add an icon into the floating action button just to make it easier to understand for our user. And we can also drag and drop the icon directly from the widget panel. And there we have it. Now for step three, we're gonna add the end drawer widget to the page and that's going to become the entry page for our user. So let's get the end drawer from the widget panel and drag it over. Now this is gonna serve as an empty container, so let's go ahead and throw in a column to align everything, and then some text as well, and also a text field. The text and text field are also widgets that can easily be drag and dropped into the column within the end drawer. And now I'm gonna go ahead and fast forward this a little bit since I'm just making some more design adjustments in order to make it easier to see the text field and allow our user to enter in their notes in an easier fashion. And I'm also gonna add in an actual button that the user is going to be able to click in order to update the NoteKeeper's database. And now we're just gonna put a few more cosmetic edits on this. And let's go into our final step of the UI, which is adding in a delete note button. So now we're essentially adding in a slidable action widget, which is going to slide on the tile widgets. And we really just want this to be able to delete the notes that we create. So we can close the slidable, even you know, add and take it away from the UI properties panel. But that's essentially it. We have our entire UI built out now, and we're gonna step into the next phase of this tutorial, which is going to be adding functionality and building this out. 
now we're going to go into building the functionalities of this application. So first what we're going to do is create a local state variable. And we're going to do this by clicking on the local state tab on the left and clicking add state variable. We're going to make sure that the persisted option is enabled here. So that way it's going to allow the notes to be persisted between app sessions. It's going to name it notes, make it as a list, and let's create it. The second functionality we're going to add is to the floating action button. So let's go ahead and select it. And now we're going to go into the action flow editor on the right hand side. Now we're going to do add action and go into, let's see, should be an option to open the end drawer. Right. Okay. So we're going to select drawer for the action and then select open drawer and set that as the action for the floating action button. Now we're going to go ahead and add the functionality to save a note inside the local state variable. So first go ahead and click outside of the canvas view and click edit end drawer from the properties panel in order to open up the actual end drawer. Make sure to select the save button. Oh, it looks like I just have it as button here. So let me change that real quick. And we'll make this into save. Okay, now we're going to go into the actions tab and we're going to go ahead and add an action to the save button. And the first action we're going to add is to update the local state variable when the user clicks the save button. So action update local state variable. We're going to choose the notes state variable that we've created previously. We're going to make sure that this says the update tab, the update type is add to the list. Since the value that's going to be added will be the user input, the source will be from variable and we're going to use the text controller in order to actually submit and update that local state variable. Now let's go ahead and add a second action. We're going to add an action here in order to essentially close the end drawer once we've completed the entry. So we've done this before. Let's go ahead and do it again drawer and then now we're going to select close drawers and finally we have one more action left to add and that's going to be the clear text fields so let's go to the action control again add an action clear text field and select text field one and that's it so now our user will be able to add a note add it to the local state variable the end drawer will close and the text fields will be cleared for the next text entry. Now we're going to add the functionality that's going to allow us to display the saved notes inside the list tile widgets. So first let's select the column wrapping list tile widget and go to the generate dynamic children tab. Now let's enter the variable name as note list and choose a source as local state under available options. Go ahead and choose notes. And we'll just leave it at that. And let's go ahead and save it. There's going to be a pop up here and you're just going to select OK. And you'll see that on the UI, it'll showcase a shadow of the dynamic children that are being generated essentially by the notes list. I'm just going to make a few adjustments here again to the notes list to make it a little bit more easily viewable. Sweet. That looks good. Now let's move on. For the final functionality, we're going to add the remove and delete a save note from the local state. So we're going to go ahead and open up the list tile widget and go into the action editor for the list tile widget. Select an action, select on update local state, choose the field to update as notes and select the update type as remove from list and select the value to remove as from variable and then note list item. And that's it. That's all that's going to be required. And essentially this action will allow a user to delete a note from the local state variable. And now we're good to go. Let's go ahead and move on to testing on Flutterfly. I'm just going to go to the top right and check that we have no issues in our project. 
Let's click on down on the run button and select test. Now this is going to set up a testing session for us, which we will be able to use the hot reload feature in case there's anything that we actually need to fix within the project. Okay, now that it's loaded, I see that I've actually added in the dark mode um, design layout for this application. Let's see if the functionality just works real quick. Okay, I dark moded the entire thing. So let's go back now into the actual project and I'm just going to make this adjustment very quickly and then use the instant reload feature in order to reload the application with a different colorway. Okay, so now we have the right colors. This is way better. And now the user can easily add a note into our NoteKeeper application and it's saved to the local state. So now let's go into the fun part of loading this up onto Google Chrome. So I made a few quick UI adjustments, just changing colors. Now let's go to the developer menu and select download code. And now we're gonna be able to download all the code for everything that we've done here and it's gonna come into a zip file. So let's go ahead and drag that onto our desktop. So now I'm gonna right click and extract the contents from our zip file. I'm gonna go ahead and open it using any code editor. I'm gonna go ahead and use VS Code for this first. Now that I have the folder open in VS Code, I'm gonna go ahead and run some Flutter commands. I'm not gonna cover how to set up Flutter on your computer in this tutorial. Basically all I'm doing here is making sure to actually set up the path to Flutter within my operating system. And that's gonna allow us to run all the Flutter commands through VS Code. Just gonna do a quick check through Flutter Doctor to make sure we're good and up and running. And now let's go ahead and get started. So first I'm gonna go ahead and navigate to the root directory of my actual project. So that's what I'm doing here in my Mac terminal. And now I'm going to run flutter pub get and that's going to get any dependencies that are necessary for this project. Sweet. And once we have that, we can get started to make modifications in two files within this folder. So the first file we're going to make a modification in is inside the web folder and it's going to be called the index.html file. So go ahead and open that and we're going to remove a script tag. So scroll to the bottom of this file and the script tag we're removing is starts with if service worker in navigator. So go ahead and remove this entire script tag here. And what we're also going to do is replace the starting HTML ta tag of the index HTML with our preferred height and width. This will allow the Google Chrome extension to actually be sized properly for a web extension. So let me just go ahead and add that in here. Now we're going to go into the web slash manifest.json file and we're going to replace this entire thing with entirely new code. I'll provide this um, for easy access below, but this is also available in our blog for easy access. Now let's go back down into the terminal and let's run this command. So it's going to be flutter build web dash dash web dash renderer HTML dash dash CSP. And this is going to create the build files within the web folder um, inside of our project directory. And that's it. Now let's go ahead on to step seven and install the extension into our browser. So first we're gonna to go to the Chrome uh, extensions a URL. So this is where all of our Chrome extensions are installed. And go ahead and enable the developer mode if you haven't already click to load unpacked and select the project directory build and then web folder where those new files have been developed and select. And now that extension should have been added to that page and it's been installed now. So let's go ahead and check it out 
on our extensions tab I'm not sure what you call this thing but let's go ahead and explore it up here so I'm gonna go ahead and click this oh no okay there we go go ahead and pin the note keeper to my Google Chrome and there we have it and now if we add a note let's see say I wanted to remind myself to buy groceries add that note I can delete it all functioning well let's see if it works on a few different websites as well so I'm here I want to remind myself okay go to target save saved another web page Okay, a reminder here. Consider climbing a mountain. Okay, sweet. And as you can see, the other notes are also retained and persist as I move across different web pages. And now you can create many different types of applications um, and functionalities for whatever Google Chrome extension that you want to create. But yeah, anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. Flutter has a massive potential that people are unlocking. And Flutterflow is really enhancing that and making it accessible. And I really hope this tutorial helped you and you can begin to develop Google Chrome extensions that you want to see and use and launch.